welcome to CG Jam. In this episode we're going to be looking at Blender's new release features and we're going to be focusing on the plane tracker which was implemented in this uh, in this release. Now what this does is it allows you to replace flat surfaces such as billboards and windows with your own images or movies that you have pre-prepared. So let's get back into Blender and get started and we'll show you exactly what you need to do. Okay, so as you can see, I've got some footage already installed in Blender, and I did that by going to the track option and adding a movie file which I had already chopped up into individual PNGs earlier. So it's just an image sequence. And I've pre cached it into Blender so it'll just play when we're ready. So if I press Alt A on my keyboard with my mouse over the screen, you can see we simply hover about a bit and then we zoom in focus on the main banner and then the clip ends and that's all there is to it for this clip okay so normally how we would do a corner track is we would take our tracking markers and we would put the put a tracking marker on each of the four corners of the plane that we were looking to change and then we would parent an empty to those tracks and then we would use the hook modifier to attach a plane and with our image texture but immediately if we zoom in and look at our image you can see that the corners of this image aren't really all that clear and if I add a marker you can see immediately in the preview window on the left on the right rather that there is nothing really for the blender to pick up on and there will be a lot of issues with sliding and with the marker jumping around so to get round that what we will do is we will, we will use Blender's new plane track feature to select some points within the boundaries of the border and we will use those points of contrast that we can see and track to create our track for our scene and we will simply go in and if I, add the, if I move this track into somewhere suitable like in the middle of this S I can begin tracking and, and following the scene all the way through. So if I begin by just pressing the single track button, you can see that we scrub through the track one frame at a time, and you see that Blender picks up on that for the most part, but it does occasionally jump out, so we have to move it back manually, which is no problem. We just slide it back into place by pressing G and moving the tracker. And then we can carry on with our track. We'll just make sure everything's in the center. Yep. It's all good. And we just carry on with the track. And follow it through. And I'll continue to follow this through and adjust the tracks until I've got this track finished. And then we'll have a look at the rest of the tracks. So we've finished our track. If we press Alt A we can see the track in place pinned in the middle of the letter S as we wanted and that's fine now all that remains to do is add the other tracks that will hold our plane in position and we're going to do that by simply picking another selection of points within the area and we just simply press add marker and I'll choose this full stop and I'll choose this little gap down here in the sea of city and scale it up a bit just so that we've got a bit more view of that contrast and then we'll pick a few more points uh, this one this looks fine scale it up a bit yep and where else shall we go we'll put one on his eye that looks like a reasonable position there's quite a bit of contrast in there that should be a good track scale it up a bit just move it in position slightly not too sure about that one. Should be okay though. And um, we'll choose this little banner up here and I'm just pressing Control and my left mouse button to position these pointers. It says pressing the add marker every time. I'll add a point just above his head. Move that into position. And I'm keeping an eye on the preview window just to the side. Gives me a good idea of what I'm looking at. Now I need to add a few more points. If I choose this area, that looks like a nice area of contrast. It's a bit wide, there might be an issue with sliding, we'll see about that later. Get it into the middle there, that should be fine. 
Let's go for his arm. That should be a good track. There's a nice blob of contrast in there. Scale it up a bit. That looks fine. I think we'll go for this top corner here. That looks okay. You'll see it's not actually on the plane, but that's the good thing about the plane tracker. You don't need to be on it. You just need to be on the flat surface. So that can include anywhere on the wall. Throw one in the letter A. And we'll take one of these points outside. Sit it there. It's a good start. Let's see, do we need any more? Nope, I think that's it. So I'm going to pause the recording and run these tracks through and then we'll see you when the results are in. Okay, so we're back and Blender has successfully tracked all those little markers. At least it looks like they're successfully tracked. Now all that remains for us to do is to turn those tracks into a plain track. And to do that we press A to select all the tracks and we come over to our left panel just under the tracking buttons there is a new section called plane track and we open that up with all our markers selected and we simply press the create plane track button and Blender calculates a border that surrounds all our selected tracks and this border is the track that we're going to use to insert our image over the banner and if we just pull the corner handles of this plane track into the corners of our banner and we then go around on each corner we and we just drag each of the corners by clicking the left mouse button and dragging and we just line them up all carefully making sure they match up with the lines of the of the image There we go, just drag that one in and as you can see we are dragging into the area of the actual markers we're not constrained to the boundaries of where the tracking markers are we can just pull this plane track into position and now if we press Alt A we should see the track pinned over the banner there we go it's all looking good. That looks fine. Uh, we do have a little problem in this corner, but we can fix that. I think if we just pull it in a bit, there we go. And we can start again. Press Alt A. Oops, jumped. Right, you can see it's still kicking out a little bit and I think the reason for that is this tracking marker just to the left is actually sliding around a bit so what we can do is either retrack it and get a better track but that wasn't a really good position to have a marker we could probably go out somewhere else on the borders around here down here in the corner somewhere maybe and apply a new track and retrack the scene but I'm not going to do that in this uh, tutorial I'm just going to wing it and see if we can get away with it yeah so I'm going to call that done and move over into the compositor now and we're going to apply our image to the scene so if we go to our window settings in this top here and choose compositing from the menu and we can get started first thing we do is click use nodes, add a backdrop, click auto render and we'll delete this render layers. Just press X and we'll shift A and add a viewer node, add the compositor over there, bring in the viewer node so we can see what's going on and first thing we need is a series of images and I'll bring those in by clicking the by adding an image icon press open go to my folder with my image sequence click the first one click open image and now you can see in the preview we have our image and it's set to single image so I'll change that to image sequence frames are 250 I'll just type that in 250 
enter. Start frame 1, that's all fine and dandy. And now if I plug that into the viewer node, and we'll drop those down a bit, and hide those over there a bit, just to give us a bit more room. And press Alt, middle mouse button, and bring up our scene. Now we need to bring in our new our new banner. So we do that by adding another image node. Shift A, input image. And I want to open my Blender files. Image textures, they will be in signs. Banner PNG, open image. And there it is in the preview. And now to mix the two together we need not a mix node but an alpha over node. So if I press shift A, uh, color, alpha over, drop that in there, it all goes white, drop the image in there and you can see our image is far too big for the scene. So we need to tell Blender to put this image into the plane track and we do that with another new node which is in the distort nodes, plane track dis deform. And if I drop that right in there, you'll see nothing happens. If I press the little drop down menu, choose the PNG that's available. Now what we have is an object and our tracking data is linked to the camera. So we click the camera and then we click this squiggle and we choose the plane track, that's the tracking data and now we have an appropriate banner. Let's zoom out a little, let's hold and bring that into the center, there we go and now when we render that out, well that should be pinned and we can test that by selecting a thing, yep it's in, in the right place and it follows our camera So if I render that out now, we will have a nice uh, zombie containment research center, Ashton Gate Stadium, which is wonderful. We still have that little issue with that corner kicking out, but I'll render it anyway and we can see what's going on. I'll just render that quickly. Okay, cool, that's done. Let's take a look at what we've got so far. Just using my VLC player, and if we take a look, That's not too bad. But for the time being, I think we can go further. Let's have another look. Let's go back to Blender. And we'll save this by going to File, Save As. And if I go into my Tutorials and call this one Call this one banner.blend, that's good enough. Save as Blender file. Okay, like I say, we've done that, but we can do better and we can see what else we can do with this. Okay, so now if I go to our file menu and we open a new, we open a new blend, and go into the motion tracking window. You'll see we've got a whole new scene set up and it is simply a short film of this little sign here. And I'm going to bring in just a hundred frames this time. I'm not going to do a full scene and then we'll start adding the markers. Okay, so our clip's in and as you can see, it's just a quick pan focusing on this sign here. And we pan around to the right and it's the most adventurous stimulating film you've ever seen but that's okay um now if we take a look at the sign so we could put our tracking markers anywhere on this plane and we're aiming to have our poster or covering this map but leaving the actual name on the sign as it is and the logos and everything 
so I'm going to click the add marker and I can stick my points in on these points of contrast first one goes in we'll just put it at the corner of the map let's get it in as tight as we can oops I zoomed out by accident there I'm looking for another point of contrast I'll stick to the corners for now I'll stop zooming in yeah, I'll get all the, get all these four corners first just tidy it up and the corners should be fairly easy to track because they've got these uh, because the shape of them, this might be a bit harder because it's less contrasty compared to the others but these blobs in the middle of the actual map should be okay I'll go for one in the centre of this logo just scale up a bit so the tracker can see what it's looking at and I'll go for this other logo on the other side of the sign drop it in and scale it up I'll just pull it down into this darker patch at the bottom that's actually a little castle gatehouse thing can't really tell in this picture and we'll choose the middle of this letter here that looks good anywhere else just drag it eventually there we go take these areas of contrast and I want something similar so if I go in this corner of these guess the buildings well it's a map so it would be so now if I select all my tracks by pressing A letter A on the keyboard that will deselect what's selected and then I press it again to select everything and I can track all these markers in one swoop by pressing the track button or I can press Control T but I'm going to use the button and just let it go and it's going to take time so I'm going to stop the recording and I'm going to track it off, off screen and I'll get back to you as soon as we're done okay so that's nicely tracked all we need to do now is add our plane track and then we'll head over to the compositor and add the image in the, exactly the same way as we did before and then we'll add a few more nodes just to make it a little bit different so if we go to the create plane track oops we have to select everything if I press A to select everything and then press the create plane track there we go we get our tracking position and now if I just drag the handles into place I'm just going to put them over this map area following the borders that already exist let's grab these corners grab this corner yep I'll just tweak it a little bit and now that's done we'll go straight over to the compositor and get started on putting our images in okay so if I click on use nodes and backdrop and auto render and then I get rid of the render layers because we don't need that and we simply go in and press add we want an image node and I'll shift D to duplicate that so we've got two and I'll shift D to duplicate it again because we need a spare one for later now if we add plain track deform node an alpha over node and now I just go to my sequence and press on the first one in the sequence press open image and you can see it there in the render in the image node and I change it to an image sequence tell it to use the full hundred frames and we then just simply connect it to the alpha over plug that in at the top I'll just add a viewer node quickly and now if I plug the plane track deform into the bottom there plug in the image and open the image that we want I'll go to my files in the signs and I'll choose the poster that we want there we go and if I click this little drop down menu and choose the image sequence that we want the plane to track to choose the object that we're tracking which is the camera and the track itself the plane track there we go we can see our poster is now successfully onto the board and that looks fine there is a little bit of a issue on the corner because I haven't put the tracker in the right place so if we just pop back quickly we can fix that 
simply by jumping into our motion tracking scene, grabbing the corner and moving it into position and jumping straight back into the compositor we can see that we've fixed our little issue there. Okay so that all looks fine at the moment but what if we wanted to do a later scene where it's a bit weathered, torn, a bit damaged, you know the kind of thing. What we can do is add some weathering to the image by applying an overlay but what we're going to do simply in this tutorial is add a mask to cut out the edges and make it look a little bit older and a little bit more worn. So to do that I'm going to come over to this image node that we have set up previously and I'm going to go to my image files and select the image mask that we have previously prepared. If I plug that into the viewer node and zoom in a little bit we can see that it's simply a blank texture that is the same dimensions as the poster and I've just used the eraser tool in GIMP to clip away the edges and make it look a little bit worn. And we're going to use this image as a mask on our poster. And to do that I'm just going to press Shift D on the Alpha Over node to duplicate it and plug it into the banner image. And I'm going to pull the mask image into the bottom of that. And then I'm going to plug the original image back into the viewer node so we can see what's going on. And immediately we can see that the image has been overlaid onto the banner so we have this black banner with just the corners of the original banner showing through but if I swap those nodes around so the poster is underneath you'll see the mask disappears but if I now pull the alpha from the mask no image node and plug it into the factor of the alpha over like so You'll see that now starts showing through and you can see the original footage behind the, the image and it looks all nicely weathered and worn and that's ideal for what we need. I'll just move these out of the way a second because we're going to add one more thing and we're going to add a bit of blur to the image just to help match it up to the footage. I simply do that by going to, by going to filter and I'm going to choose blur, drop it into the, onto the image node for the main banner and I'm going to choose fast Gaussian and I'll just zoom in a little bit now so we can see what we're doing on this node. I'm going to change the X value to 10 and the, and the Y value as well to 10. Just let that load up. And there we go, we can see we've got a little bit of blur on the on the poster it's not too doesn't fit quite well just yet so if I increase it by 5 let's make it 15 Y 15 and there we go that's a lot nicer looks more like the original footage so we can move on to rendering it out we'll just increase the resolution to full we'll leave the file as it is we'll just leave it in our temporary file and we'll change the codec from a PNG to a H.264 and hit animation. And now it's finished rendering, this is what we've achieved. There's still a little bit of work that could be done on this scene, but this one seems to have worked quite well. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. Try it out, have fun. And the links to the files are in the description on YouTube and on our website. Feel free to share your results with us on Facebook and Twitter. And don't forget you can leave us a comment on Google Plus and in the comment section on YouTube. And we'd love to hear from you. And don't forget to subscribe for new content every week. I look forward to seeing you then. Bye for now.